Well, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to our Planet Zoo Sandbox build. This is episode 24 where we're carrying on with the Safari Tour. So today we are cracking on with the Safari Tour. Last episode, if you've not checked that out, go give it a watch, but we basically worked on this whole entrance section here, we worked on the building, this kind of fancy roof entrance part, the path leading up to it, we put a little drink stand here as well, and a part of this was to make sure that that focus was around that tower as you were sort of leading up to the entrance, you can see the tower, that's obviously looking pretty good. Still got the issue here with vertical screens. I've not worked out this one yet. I still can't get them to show vertically, so I'll keep working on that one. And uh, yeah, obviously inside here, and today we're gonna be heading outside into the safari section. We're gonna be working on quite a bit today. So we've got the garden, all the way leading up to the entrance of the safari tour, what that looks like. We've got a little bit of work to do with the staff pathing around the outside as well, but just generally working on this entire safari area. So let's jump straight into the time lapse. Okie dokie then. So obviously I said last episode, this was probably gonna be like a two part or there's gonna be a couple of episodes towards making this section of the park happen. I've tried my best to do it in just two episodes, so you'll be happy to know that by the end of this episode, we have basically all of the safari section done. So by the end of it, you'll see the track, how it leads through the different animals, this entrance area, how I've gated it all off, all of that exciting stuff. I tried really, really hard just to do it for two parts. I didn't want to do a third one because I felt like I'd be longing it out a little bit and I want to move on to something new. Thinking about the restaurants, maybe adding in a hotel, Perhaps we want to add in some transport to the park as well because the park is getting pretty big now. Also, we take a little bit of a moment in this episode to look at the size of the park. Where's the barriers going to be? How are we going to gate it off? That kind of thing. So you'll see how we work with that later on. Here, I'm just basically thinking we need the safari tour to enter a part of the safari. I don't want the garden to just be open to the safari section. I at least want some sort of gated off area. So this is what I'm doing here, using the track doors that you get for barriers and stuff for enclosure. Obviously this isn't an enclosure, but it helps sort of gate it all off and make it this kind of environment section that you're gonna experience before you get to see the animals. So just while I'm basically padding out this safari section, you'll see I use a Jeep uh, in a couple of areas to sort of make it feel a little bit more authentic. Wanted to talk about the channel a little bit and about some of the plans that I've got coming up. I've been thinking about the channel and about where we want to take it going forwards. Now, I definitely want to keep doing Planet Zoo videos. I definitely want to maybe explore Planet Coaster again. Uh, we did originally start a Roller Coaster Tycoon series maybe about a year ago uh, before I took the break on the channel. Might pick that back up again. But something that I'm quite keen to do, or at least explore, and I'd love to get your opinions on it, is sort of doing these, I guess, like one-off videos, maybe once a week, once every two weeks, where we are trying out an indie game or something that's maybe not as popular or different to the channel, just as like kind of these like one-off sessions where we're playing for a couple of hours and basically going through a variety of games, different genres, could be anything, could be horror, shooting, could be strategy, could be another type of Planet Zoo game, could be anything really. It's something I've been thinking about, I'm floating the idea out there, I'll continue to think about it until I actually do do it. We probably won't do something like that until we crack on with the majority of this park. Maybe you want to do a franchise mode on Planet Zoo and make that a series, but I realise that we're at 24 episodes so far on this park. We've still got our 1k subs video in the pipeline where we want to do the tropical gardens with the domes. And after that, well, the park's going to be pretty packed out and we're going to be sort of like approaching that end section of sort of finishing it up and whatnot and then doing a whole park tour in a full video. And then after that, well, I want to, I want to start thinking about what that's going to be. And uh, like I said, I want to have a regular series, but I've been thinking about chucking in like the occasional video here and there of, as I said, a different indie title or a different game, just as one-off episodes to see uh, to see what people enjoy. So, but for now, we'll crack on with Planet Zoo. But I just wanted to give everybody an update to let you all know kind of 
what the plans were, especially after we finished this park. Okay, so focusing back on the build now. So we're just padding out this entrance area. I've got signpost here, which I add a couple of custom signs on a little bit later on. We've got obviously a Jeep. We've got some water, some water effects, some floating logs and stuff just to add some atmosphere. At the back end of the Safari tour, I'm adding in another gate because obviously the whole section is going to be gated. Having a bit of difficulty trying to line it up, I ended up having to build it backwards. I'm not entirely sure why I couldn't do it one way, but I've got it working in the end. Just need to play around with it a little bit more. I ended up using the corrugated metal that we used around the entrance of this sort of outback safari area to actually gate off that whole entrance of the safari tour. And then we use it to sort of cut off the back bit as well. Here, I'm basically grabbing the sort of like blueprint of trees. This is what I was saying earlier in the episode. Just to start molding the shape of like areas that we're going to build out into. Because we're not going to like fill out this entire square with everything. Because by then I think my computer would probably melt <laughs> if we continued at this rate. So I'm using the trees to sort of gate off sections that we're going to build into and expand on so that we start looking at the final parts of the park final sections obviously the tropical garden is going to be a huge section like massive and as i was saying earlier having a hotel some transport and whatnot to help guests get around the park they've added restaurants in the game now so we definitely need to be adding a couple of those in around we've still got a lot to do but by putting those trees down it gives us a better idea of the direction of the park the shape where we should be putting things so just tightening up the entrance or the, the sort of station, I guess, for the safari tour. Sticking down some ivy on the pathing just to give it that overhang. I do that a couple times throughout this build. Looks pretty good. I like it. I'm going to do it more. I end up slapping loads of ivy around the corrugated metal that we're sort of like using to fence off this section. It just adds to the aesthetic and I think it looks good. The water... We're adding a bit of water in most of the environments and using the dirty water preset that you can now do, uh, which is excellent. So one thing with this build that I don't quite work out outside of the vertical screens that we've got going on is I can't seem to add more cars to the Safari Tour. So right now it's like just the one car, but there is an option to add more. So I need to, I need to work out what's going on there whether it's because it needs more stations or I don't think it's because the station needs to be longer at all there's definitely space there but when I close it when I put it in test mode stuff like that I just can't seem to add more jeeps so if any of you know how that works and why I might be experiencing that then uh, drop me a comment let me know if not I'll, uh, I'll do a little google and I'll uh, see if I can try it and work that out so here we are yeah we're just chucking ivy all over the place expanding on this second section before the safari tour enters where the animals are when we get to the animals obviously we've got to bring the animals back and i need to make sure that the enclosures are working because obviously there was a lot of updates in between when i last worked on this part of the enclosure in comparison to now and the there are things that have changed so animals were able to escape some were able to get through water so when we bring them back in you'll see that we end up reworking some of the uh, edging for the enclosures to make sure that they can't get up and escape so one thing that I might do in a future episode, depending when, when the park fills out a bit more and the guests sort of spread out a bit, we'll see how it works. But I might add like a hidden ATM or something at the top of the watchtower that is in the middle of the free enclosures, just because I've noticed that guests are obviously very attracted towards the safari tour, which is great. But I do also want them to take the footpath and go up the tower. That's the whole reason it's there. So to sort of trick the game into getting them to go up there i might like i said hide an atm up there within the the scenery just to sort of bring guests that way a bit more here we are we are starting off getting the dingoes in here and uh, just sort of padding out the rest of that enclosure we did a lot with that enclosure with the dingoes before when we did originally pad out this area so we didn't need to do too much with it but straight into the kangaroos we've got them in we're checking that they can't jump out the place adding a bit of interesting ditches and stuff for the terrain so that it's not just one circle of water around i wanted to add in a few more water elements like the fountains and the sort of um, those water effects that you get 
chucking in obviously water pump stations around to make sure that the water even though that we've got it on the dirty preset stays clean if that makes sense and uh yeah here we go we're just adding in those special effects so it's not just sort of, sort of still boring water right then and then very similar to how we did with the dingoes we are making some bedding underneath some rocks so i pop those next to the side of the hill and then here in a second you'll see i start surrounding them with rocks making a roof around the rest of the enclosure we keep it pretty basic with some enrichment toys and then we go through to add in some trees to sort of pad out some of the empty areas we don't want to do too much with some of these spots because obviously firstly we've got a safari tour going around so i don't want to make it really hard for people on the safari to see the animals and more importantly i need to think about a second perspective which is from the tower we need to make sure that people from the tower can see down and see the kangaroos so we've got that hard shelter it's there so that the animals do have some privacy and that they don't get too stressed but then we've got loads of big open spaces with very minimal foli foliage to uh, basically allow the guests to still be able to see them. Okay, so we go back to the tower and start fixing the path. We had to delete it before because the uh, southern castle areas kept escaping. So we pop them in. We quickly fly over to the seal enclosure because uh, one of them I think has given birth inside this little cave here and then got stuck. So I just had to remove it into the environment. Back to the southern castle areas. So this is where they were all escaping. So you'll see here that I use rocks from the outside of the enclosures to basically create a barrier. It kind of works. I think I would like for the barrier to be a little bit lower still with these rocks, but I think it does the trick. Ultimately, people aren't going to be stood necessarily right there looking over. They're going to go up the tower anyway. So we then carry on uh, tidying up the staff path, just hiding it a little bit more, neatening up this path that goes over the top of the track because it's a little bit wonky. At which point we continue working on the southern cassowaries enclosure, adding some hills, some more rocks, a little bit more foliage, and then again doing something very similar that we've done throughout all of these enclosures so that there's some sort of theming, which is putting their bedding underneath these rocks. And then here I was just flying around fixing a few animals that had gotten stuck for some reason. Uh, every now and then they just hop up on a rock and then they can't get down. So going through, adding some enrichment, making sure that they're going to be happy. And then afterwards, we chuck in a load of foliage as well to start padding this out. And I actually start experimenting with a couple of different trees because uh, these, uh, the southern cassowaries, they don't use the same type of foliage as like the kangaroos or the dingoes. So as you can see, we choose a couple of different items that we're going to be sort of like planting around just to make sure that they're happy. And then we can run through and then duplicate them all over the place. We find some bushes that we can put down around the base of the rocks. These are really, really good items to use, especially if you're trying to make trees, rocks, those kind of items like blend into an environment way more. So if you can find those sort of like flat, wide bushes, they're really, really good. So we've got a couple of those. Then we've got these massive trees that are sort of like pepper around the back of the enclosures just to sort of like hide that skyline a little bit more. We go through, we start adding in a few more rocks, especially around the pathing area, just to neaten it all up so it doesn't look completely bare where the guests aren't going. Doing something very similar here with the staff path that we did with the entrance for the safari tour, using these logs to basically just make it look like there are some custom made supports for the pathing. And then again, topping it off with some ivy. For this section here where the safari tour comes out from the enclosures i didn't just want to have like just an open area so we did end up closing it off with the corrugated metal and at first it might look a little bit odd because the corrugated metal is bare and there's not that much in the environment but once we pad it out with more rocks water environment pieces that kind of thing i think it blends quite well and you don't really notice it that much so obviously we add in some more water here a load more rocks we add in some scenery items we make a hut to go over the top of the track uh, using some of the more cor some more of the corrugated metal items which obviously they're perfect for this environment with the rusted roof and stuff and then just padding out those areas again with more of those bushes adding in a few signs and really just sort of decorating this like exit section because we don't just want it to just be straight from animals straight to the um the entrance uh, where, where the guests can get onto the uh, safari tour. So here you see that we're obviously just working on this hut and these are all items from the Australian pack so if you've got it obviously these are perfect for this kind of environment. So here we just go through we continue decorating this section but what we're going to do we're going to fade to black and when we come back up we will show you the finished enclosure.
And there we have it. That is the Safari Firewatch Tower Outback Australian section of our zoo. All done in two episodes. We did it. I told you we could do it. So there we go. If you enjoyed the video, then definitely give it a like and a subscribe and come back for the next episode when we move on to another section of our park. This park is getting very, very big now and we're going to be approaching the end in like, I don't know, probably like another 10 or 15 episodes, but it's coming up very, very soon. So be sure to subscribe if you want to come back for the rest of the series.